Hello and welcome to Focus Westerville. I'm your host, John Buckles. On this program, we will look at Westerville's nationally recognized Parks and Recreation Department, one of only 117 accredited Parks and Recreation agencies in the country. Westerville's Parks and Rec Department is a four-time national winner of the prestigious NRPA Gold Medal Award. Obviously, it takes a great deal of planning, energy, and money to fund and operate a Parks and Recreation Department of the magnitude of Westerville. So how did we get here? In 1998, after an extensive process known as the PROS 2000 Master Plan, Westerville voters approved a one quarter percent income tax good for 20 years. This tax helped create the Westerville Community Center, build a community-wide recreational trail system, and make improvements at nearly every park in the city. In all, funding about $30 million worth of parks, recreation, and open space projects. This November 4th, Issue 24, a 20-year extension of the PROS 2000 tax, goes before voters. If approved, it would keep the current parks dedicated one quarter percent income tax in place through the year 2040. To understand more of the history and the details regarding the funding and direction of Westerville's Parks and Rec Department, we talked with Executive Director Randy Aller. The uh, PROS Master Plan uh, was a process we engaged the community to develop uh, really what does the community want uh, in terms of parks and recreation, what are the community needs both then and, and uh, for the future over the next 20 years. And so that was kind of the first uh, master plan that was done by the department uh, that was very uh, involved with by the citizens. And the original master plan it was to uh, build a community center, uh, which is the facility uh, that our community has utilized uh, and come to know as a primary hub for parks and recreation purposes, along with uh, uh, preserving and renovating the Air Heritage Park in Avril Barn uh, and Homestead, uh, which our community uh, has utilized quite a bit, developing the pathway system uh, for our uh, citizens to use, as well as enhancing the neighborhood parks, uh, updating you know playgrounds and, and uh, restroom facilities and that type of thing within the park system. Through the years, we were able to uh, accomplish a few other key projects uh, to meet community needs. One of those was the Millstone Creek Park Playground. Uh, and that's a totally accessible playground so uh, people of all abilities uh, can play and utilize the space as well as get children out into a natural play area. Uh, that was a project that was not originally in the master plan but was able to be funded through uh, the master plan. And then in addition uh, to that was the Highlands Park Aquatic Center. Um, the original pool was built in 1973 and uh, you know, was beginning to have a lot of significant repairs. And so the community came together and we planned uh, for the aquatic center uh, space. And that's been open for four years now. And the community seems to have really embraced uh, that project. Since we were able to accomplish all of the projects identified in the PROS 2000 plan, as well as uh, the two additional projects uh, that I mentioned, the Highland Park Aquatic Center and Millstone Creek Park, we went back out and engaged the community in planning process again. And we spent about two years uh, reaching out to citizens and involving them in a variety of ways, whether that was focus groups, public meetings, intercept surveys, um, or through statistically valid random sample surveys. And through that process, as well as looking at um, trends across the country, we were able to come up with the projects that are identified in, in the new PROS master plan uh, to really meet the needs of our community, both now and, and for the future, for kind of the next generation. Some of the highlights that have, that have been developed through that master planning process where the community really wants to see the pathway system expanded. We currently have 29 miles and we're looking to go towards uh, the goal of about 55 miles. But the primary goal there is to be able to uh, connect park to park and parks to schools and, and the pathways to major uh, to neighborhoods and to major locations within the community because that is a high priority for our citizens uh, because regardless of your ability anybody can walk, rollerblade, jog, ride your bike on the pathway system and that's a very important uh, factor that people look for in quality of life. The second thing uh, that really came out is we need to address the needs of our senior citizens. Our community is going to continue to age in place and as that happens uh, we need to be able to serve uh, the older adult, the senior population 
uh, better. As with any proposed ballot issue, there are inevitably a number of questions that citizens would ask. We spent time gathering those questions, and throughout the remainder of this edition of Focus Westerville, you will hear some of those questions and answers. Why is the city trying to renew a quarter percent income tax? The investment made from the initial one quarter of one percent income tax in terms of new parks, the community center, Highlands Park Aquatic Center, past systems and more will need to be maintained or improved over decades. These parks and related recreational assets will be the city's responsibility to maintain decades ahead, and so the funding source to do so must likewise be decades in advance. Because of this, the renewal of this tax best positions Westerville to continue long-term planning to meet our current and future needs, as identified in the PROS Master Plan. A continued dedicated funding source has been identified as the most effective strategy to maintain and grow our nationally recognized park system for the future generations. This dedicated funding is critical in supporting the high quality of life the Westerville community has come to know and expect through the park and recreation system. What will this cost me? Actually, there are no additional costs associated with this request. It's important to know that it's not a new tax nor a tax increase. It's a renewal, a continuation of our existing one quarter of 1% income tax that is already being paid by residents as well as people that uh, reside outside of Westerville but work in Westerville. component of the master plan was the Westerville Community Center. These days it's hard to envision Westerville without the Community Center. The citizens really love our Community Center. It's really become the heart of our park and recreation system and they really value that because there's so many opportunities here to bring families together, to socialize, to meet new people. Um, if you're new to our community people come in and say wow you know, this is really awesome that you provide so many programs and so many services. In fact, we run over 2,400 different programs a year at this facility. This facility has everything for kids. It has swimming, they have wall climbing, they have a little playground inside, they have uh, good after and before facilities for parents who are really busy. I can't think of a kid who's not happy inside there. Uh, well, me and my wife actually like to go to the pool and uh, swim a lot. It's a very nice uh, pool. Um, they do a great job of kind of making, you know, there's the recreational pool and then there's also the pool where you can actually do laps and, and be fit. Um, very good track, uh, very nice setup for the track and the way they have everything segregated from the, the workout area to the uh, track upstairs. Very uh, good use of space, I'd say. We just joined, um, we both just started working out here and so we joined the Ruck Center and it's fantastic. There are, so there's, um, first off, the locker rooms are fantastic. They have everything we need. We go back to work during the day, so we come during work hours. So we have to, you know, get dressed and, and redo ourselves. So. Um, we do that here so the locker rooms are wonderful. Then we go up with, there's a fitness center and you can walk, you can, um, I usually do the exercise, um, either the treadmill or one of the elliptical machines. And they're all, they're fantastic, they're in great condition. It's clean. It's great, we're happy to be here. And you know, we're happy to be a part of it. It's, they always have a lot to offer, especially to kids. And for right now, that's our stage of life that we're glad to be a part of, so. It's been wonderful, great, great outlet for us. and and we do it five days a week. It's wonderful. We're in silver sneakers uh, two, four days a week, and then we do the, uh, the upstairs and the, the physical stuff, you know, at least two or three days a week. So it's been wonderful, and it's a good way to keep in shape, and I think we're in reasonably good shape for the age. We appreciate that. This is such a wonderful place to come and enjoy and work out and feel better. Did you know that in the past year, more than two-thirds of the households in Westerville used the community center? No wonder Westerville has won the Ohio Department of Health's Healthy Community Gold and Platinum Awards several times. We live and work in Westerville, and how much is this levy going to cost us? There are no additional costs or new taxes. You're currently paying 2% of your income in local income tax. One quarter of 1% of that 2% tax rate goes exclusively to parks and recreation. 
This will not change. I live in Westerville, but I work in another city. How much will this cost me? Your tax liability will not increase. In Ohio, municipal income taxes are paid principally to the community in which you work with resident communities typically providing a full credit for taxes paid elsewhere, as is the case in Westerville. Your taxes will likely only change if the community in which you work changes its tax rate. Why now? The dedicated one quarter of 1% income tax is set to expire on December 31st of 2020. As we near 2020, the city's ability to plan for, finance, and secure grants and other funding for capital improvements, such as building expansions, new facilities, needs to occur years in advance. A traditional capital planning timeline is up to five years. From that point, long-term financing must be secured, which typically runs for 20 years. So the planning we're doing today extends beyond 2020. The city's ability to begin a major capital project, like any of those identified in the PROS Master Plan, is limited without a dedicated funding source. If the existing one quarter of 1% income tax expires, these projects would remain unfunded. The consequence of this would be the city's inability to meet community needs as identified by residents in the master plan. The renewal would continue the tax commencing on January 1st of 2020 for an additional term of 20 years, but planning and design activities for future projects could begin sooner. Another signature parks and recreation facility in Westerville is the Highlands Park Aquatic Center. It was carefully designed and opened in 2011, and as you'll see, it's not only a source of pride for Westerville residents, but is destination recreation for others in Central Ohio. At a public pool, uh, it's a very good experience. Um, I've known Highlands since uh, before they, they did the big reconstruction, and it's a better pool. Highlands Park Aquatic Center opened in 2010, and it uh, replaced uh, the, the original Highlands Park uh, swimming pool. But as with any pool, uh, over time, the um, capital improvement repairs that need to be done and really keeping um, things fresh and meeting community needs uh, we identified the need to develop the Highlands Park Aquatic Center. And the Highland Park Aquatic Center is kind of more of an, a water park, but in a natural setting. Uh, we have uh, fun activities such as the zero death pool, uh, the leisure pool, the lap pool, the diving well, a large lazy river, uh, two water slides. There's a small uh, spray ground area for children that are ages five and under. And then there's a larger spray ground area for anybody. something for everybody uh, in a sense of different pools, um, different areas where people can be together, more secluded. Um, I bring my granddaughter who's nine months old, I bring my daughter who's seven, and my wife who's 46. You know, we all kind of find something to do here. place to come. There's all different types of pools for all different ages. My older kids can swim in the older pool. My younger have a place to swim and it's great. It's easy to keep track of the kids and you know kind of segment off the areas. It's designed really well to keep the little kids in the little parts and the bigger kids in the bigger parts so I feel safe here. places for the kids to be but for the grown-ups like the lazy river my kids get me to go down the slides so there's fun for adults on the slides and comfortable chairs to just hang out and read a book what a great asset the award-winning aquatic center is for Westerville I'm struck by the diversity of people who come through the doors on any given day there's certainly something for people of all ages. I work in Westerville, but I live in another city. How much will this levy cost me? You are currently paying 0.25% of your income to Westerville, which qualifies you to receive parks and recreation programs and services 
at the resident rate. Your tax liability will not increase. The PROS 2000 Master Plan clearly identified a need to expand the pathways in our community. And today, thousands of residents use the 27 miles of the Westerville Bike and Walkway System. Having a recreational pathway system within the community is very, very important. Um, it is always the number one thing that citizens want because regardless of your age, your ability, you can utilize the system to walk, rollerblade, jog, uh, run, ride a bicycle. You can do it individually, you can do it with friends, you can do it as a family. The pathway system is so important because it gets people moving and walking and exercising and our goal is to have a park uh, or a pathway within a half mile of every citizen within the community. And that's so important because a half mile is basically a 10 minute walk and if you're out walking, you're gonna live a healthier, active lifestyle. Oh, I think it's great. I, uh, I, we've been here all week, and uh, we've ridden, I think, most of, the, most of them in Westerville, one way or another, Alum Creek and the uh, Erie, Ohio Trail. And I, think, I mean, I think the trails are in great shape. I mean, they're well maintained. They've got, you know, plenty of warning when you're coming to an intersection. See, there's this great bridge across County Line Road. We really appreciate that. I don't have to cross the busy highway. So yeah, it's, it's all, uh, it's fantastic. You know, when you've got young kids uh, getting out there on the bikes, uh, it's a great way for everybody to exercise together at their own pace. Well, here in Westerville, we have over 29 miles of bikeways, and I use them pretty extensively, as do a lot of people I know. Um, often on a day like this, I will run all of my errands in town on my bike using our bikeways, and I don't have to get in the car and deal with traffic. So that's just of tremendous value to me. The bikeways are extensive enough that I can get to the grocery store, to the library, to the pool, to the post office. I can get just about anywhere I need to in Westerville using the bikeways. And my children can use them to get to the places that they need to go to safely. What I think is probably the most interesting is that um, they, they're so diverse. You can never get bored. Um, starting from my house, I can go in four or five different directions and end up in totally different places. And, um, it's just, it's great. I mean, I, the, the quality of the bike paths, I mean, they're in such great condition and shape and, um, and they're only adding to them and expanding. And As the residents have testified, they really do appreciate the benefits of our 27 mile system. But one of the major recommendations of the PROS 2020 Master Plan is to expand the leisure path and bikeway system to create a totally connected network between Uptown, the schools, and the parks. Because the projects recommended in the PROS Master Plan are long-term capital projects, Timing will depend on the voter approval in November. If voters support the PROS income tax renewal, projects will be introduced and slated for design. Project updates will be available online at the city website. Maintaining a healthy, active lifestyle is important for all our citizens. But perhaps nowhere have we seen the type of growth and fitness demands than we have by our older adult population. In the past year alone, there were more than 600 new members who joined the Senior Center. The so-called Silver Tsunami is indeed here, in full force, with an attendance of 50,000 older adults participating in nearly 500 programs and events. opportunities not only for the youth and families but you'll see the senior uh, senior needs being better addressed we need to address the needs of our senior citizens our community is going to continue to age in place and as that happens uh, we need to be able to serve 
uh, the older adult, the senior population, uh, better. And, and currently they're in a, a facility that back in the early 80s was a water treatment plant and uh, they're outgrowing that space. And so we're going to look to uh, bring the senior center over to the community center and expand the community center. So we'd have additional space uh, to meet our senior needs, but as well have more program space to meet the needs of all the people. So when the seniors aren't using it during uh, regular hours, that space will be programmed for the uh, uh, people of all ages. Nothing else that it should be added. There should be more things available here too. It's wonderful the way it is, but it's, it could be even better. I think they're covering us so very well. I assume that there could be more classes because I know sometimes the classes get large and not, maybe not everybody can be served. So I would maybe add some more classes and maybe a few more um, activities that in groups that we meet. There's a walking group, I think sometimes it meets and walks. Just between this and the senior center, they're already offering us so much but it can always get better. It's great to see such an active older adult population in Westerville. But did you know that by the year 2025, it is projected that nearly one third of our residents will be 55 plus in age. One of the real strengths of our Parks and Recreation Department is the host of community partnerships that contribute to the park system. Hundreds of citizens collaborate with staff and contribute their time, talent, and money. And not only is it good stewardship of our community resources, when it comes to fitness, everybody wins. Here's just one example, youth sports programs. The Parks and Recreation Department has many partners um, that we work with uh, to provide service to the community. And without the partners or without the success of our original PROS Master Plan, a lot of those programs and services wouldn't, wouldn't be at the level they are today. Some examples of those are we've worked for many, many years with uh, the WYBSL, Youth Baseball and Softball League here in Westerville. And we have a, a joint relationship where they help us maintain and invest into the fields and, and run and operate the programs and uh, we help them in terms of promotion and, and serving the community. It, it is truly a great partnership and we have a similar arrangement with WASA, with Westerville Area Soccer Association. It's great. It's very close by. We've got kids from the community right here and um, you know they're well kept facilities and, and good grounds for playing soccer. We need good parks to, to play. We need open fields that are well maintained um, and, and open for everybody to use. So no, Wassa wouldn't be the same without the parks. It's a great place to play and um, you know to have, have time with the coaches and the teams out here. It's a great area. YBSL was established in 1951. It's one of the largest all-volunteer, independent youth sports organizations in the area. Uh, we've had a long-running partnership with the City of Westerville, specifically the Parks and Rec Department. Um, we've helped them plan and build and maintain many, many fields. We've served tens of thousands of young people over the years. It's just been a very great uh, partnership with the city. That's fabulous. You certainly can't put a price tag on the value of working together to serve our next generation. On this edition of Focus Westerville, we've learned some more about our award-winning Parks and Recreation Department. We've learned about Issue 24 and the PROS 2020 Master Plan. If you'd like more information about Issue 24 or the PROS 2020 Master Plan, please go to the City of Westerville website, www.westerville.org. I'm John Buckles, and we'll see you next time on Focus Westerville.